Hey guys, it's Carson Muller Tech here, back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be checking out some products that were sent to me known as the company Ingenious. And I'm holding that upside down. But both of these together, they form pretty much an ideal scenario as far as a home internet standpoint. This is meant to be business products. However, together, they can be used in the home environment as well. And the reason for both of these, first off, this is their EAP 1250 access point, which boasts features such as 802.11ac Wi-Fi and multi-user MIMO, which is fantastic considering this only goes for 75 US dollars. For that same price point with basically any other brand out there, you just won't be getting those features. So if you're a homeowner, for example, and you're having issues with your current Wi-Fi reaching different corners of your house, as well as it being a little bit too slow, then this may be your solution for you. And what this does here, this sky key, is it allows you to access this access point in your network anywhere in the world. So you don't have to be directly on your network, which for a business, this is fantastic because that means that you can access your clients remotely and not have to worry about going on site to fix issues when they arise. So together, these form a pretty cost effective unit. However, I don't know exactly how well they perform at this point in this video. So what I'm gonna be doing is unboxing both of these as well as setting them up. And then at the end, I'll be giving you some of its good features, some of the bad things. And then I'll be letting you know whether or not I believe that together or even individually that these are worth it. So just to be clear up front here, yes, Ingenious did send me both of these products for free, but they're not paying me to say anything in this video. So if these end up sucking, I will definitely let you know. But with that being said, let's get right into the unboxing. And the first thing that I'm going to unbox here is going to be the Sky Key. On this box, there is not really much information other than just the name and Ingenious. So opening it up, all that you get inside is the sky key itself, which is packaged in this papery film. It's actually a plastic, although it felt like a paper. So this is what the sky key looks like. It's got a LAN 1 port, which is for the PoE and power, and a LAN 2 port. So if you don't have a uh, PoE switch that can put out PoE, this does not contain a PoE injector with it. However, you can purchase a PoE injector from Ingenious separately, or you could also go and purchase a power adapter because it does have a power adapter input right there. There's also the micro SD card slot right here and a reset. So that's all for on the outside of this. It is kind of nicely built. It has some rubber stoppers here on the bottom as well as two wall mounts. So if you're mounting this on the wall, you got that. Setting this aside, you also inside the box get, of course, a little booklet with information and some mounting hardware. Next up, I'm gonna be opening up the EAP 1250. This box has a little bit more on it. It's got the picture on the front as well as the naming. Um, on the side, it gives some specs. It does mention here the turbo aspect of it is the fact that it has a quad core processor inside of it up to 717 megahertz. Um, as far as everything else on the box, there is not really anything. So opening this on up, quick and easy as well. Similar experience to the Sky Key. Up on top, you do get a quick installation guide. So just some advertisements. And then here on top, you will see the product itself, which is packaged in this plastic bag. I've got to say, picking this up for the first time, this is an incredibly light access point. In fact, it's probably one of the lighter access points I've ever felt. Taking a look here, it does have a LAN input, and this is also capable of PoE injection. Both of these products run on 48 volt PoE, so if your switch supports that, then you are set. But again, you can get a power adapter, which inside this box, it actually includes. Usually you don't see this, but it is nice that they included this because I mean, they could just include nothing. But if you don't have a PoE, then this is pretty much it for you. Also inside the box, we got some mounting for a typical drop ceiling and then also some mounting hardware. Other than that, that is all that is inside the box. And here are the two products. So now that I've got these out of the boxes and ready to set up, let's go and start configuring these. So as far as the setup goes, it is incredibly easy. All you've got to do is plug in the sky key. And for my case, I do have ubiquity switches, which are PoE powered. So 
they do put out a PoE power of 48 volts, which is fantastic because plugging the Sky Key in, I got it to work. And also a cool thing to mention about the Sky Key is the fact that it does have magnets in it. So if you don't want to mount it up with screws, you can throw it up with some magnets. And then as far as the EAP 1250 goes, this is just as easy as well. You can plug it in through that power adapter that is included in the box or it is also available through PoE. So as far as accessing the configuration pages for both of these devices, there are a couple of ways of doing it. However, for me, I'm just gonna look in my Ubiquiti dashboard and find that my Sky Key is right here and it does have this IP address. So I'm just going to copy that and then go to that link. So that is for the Sky Key. And then I will also go and access the web page for the EAP 1250. So I would suggest after you have done this that you will go and change the IP addresses through the MAC address to make sure that it is a static address so it doesn't change on your network. However, for these purposes right now, I'm not gonna deal with that because that's a different issue. But now that I have gotten to here, the default login is admin and password. Once you've done that, log on in. It will say the user email is required. Please set an email address. So you click OK. Now here you can set a admin account password. So this is different than the login. So I'm going to, for right now, make it a simple password. With that being done, press apply. Once you have logged in, you will be able to see the information for the Sky Key. There is an update available for me right now, so I'm going to run this update just to ensure that I am running the latest version. Once the update is complete, I am set to go and begin adding devices. So you do so by going up to the top, device inventory, adding your device, and then in here, you will have to follow their method of adding the device. I've only got the EAP 1250, so I'm gonna click on register. It'll take a couple of seconds, and once it has applied the registration, I will see here that it does say that I have one claim device now, and in order to add this to this main point where it says access point, you're gonna have to go and create a new project. I'm going to title this Home Wi-Fi Project, no description, apply. Here's where you will click on your devices that you want to add to the project. And if you are someone who works with Unify and Ubiquity, this is similar to creating a site. A project is similar to a site, and then within that site, you have different devices. After you've added the device to the project, it will show the status, and currently it is still connecting. So once it is online, it will give you the full information. You can click on the device name, and when you click on the device name, it will open up some of your settings. So this is great if you need to set up the configuration uh, just out of the box. This is how you do so. You can adjust your radio settings, you can adjust your bit rate, as well as all your different SSIDs. So currently it is only showing the first randomly assigned SSID. And if I look in my network list, that does show up and it is not secured right now. So clicking on that, you are able to edit this. So I'm going to change it to Home Miller Wi-Fi. I'm not gonna hide the SSID. So you can add a captive portal if you would like. If this is a guest network, you may want to do that. But for me, nope, not gonna do that. Click on save. And a couple other things, if you go to the home tab, it will now show the access point here as the total managed, which is pretty cool. So now that it is up, you've got a lot of different settings to play around with other than just changing the SSID. If you're a homeowner, that is likely all that you're going to want to do up to this point because that's pretty much all you need. But there are a lot of separate things that you can do within each of these different dropdowns. But there's far too many to go through right now in this video, so I'm going to allow that discovery up to you. In the event that you only get the EAP 1250 if you're looking into getting this and you don't want to get the Sky Key, then just to show you, you can also access the access point through its IP address. So I got this the same way through the Unify controller. You can get this through your router as well. Um, but in this case, you go directly to the IP address and you can log in with admin and, and admin. Um, once you've logged in, this has a ton of similar features as far as the Sky Key goes. 
Um, so it's got a lot of the same things that you're able to change. But in this case, since I have this set up through that sky key, it does not allow me to go and change up settings as it would if I hadn't added it to the sky key and adopted it. Because it's set up now, let's get to testing some of the performance. Now, as far as the long range goes, this isn't claimed to be like a long range access point, but I still do want to put it side by side with the UAP Pro to see when it drops out its signal as well as how it performs at further distances. So with that being said, here are two some mobile tests through my phone outside. Before hopping outside, I do want to show you where both of these access points are located so then you can get an idea of where these are located in the house. And then I'll also run a test here inside. So right now the EAP 1250 is located here in my room. And if I go right out here into this closet, up there is where the UAP Pro is. So the first test that I'm gonna be doing inside is through here. I would say it is about 50 feet away at most from where the other access points are. And back here in this bathroom, typically when you are on a phone, you get anywhere around two to one bar. I'm not sure why, because everywhere else in the house, it is usually all right. But back here, seemingly, whenever you are connected to the Ubiquiti network, for some reason, it's always lower. So I am connected to the Miller Wi-Fi right now, which is a Ubiquiti-based network. When I head on over to the Speed Test app, you will see that this displays a relatively low speed. It's not like the slowest ever, but it is a decent amount slower, so I'm getting around 10 now. I would say on average, whenever I usually do these tests, it is around a five megabits per second download and a two or lower upload speed. However, taking a snapshot of those tests and moving over to the EAP 1250 signal, you'll see how much faster the download speed as well as the upload speed is. The upload speed is a lot higher because it can pull in a signal a lot better, which is definitely odd with the EAP 1250 and the bars did just drop to two. However, even with those drop of two bars, I am still getting faster speeds than I did with the UAP Pro. So now moving outside and away from this indoor environment. Heading outside may yield a different result here as I haven't actually tried this yet. But what I'm gonna do is head down the deck and over to the patio area. As far as the signal goes, I'm connected back to the Ubiquiti network and I've got two bars of signal. So I'm gonna head over to the speed test app and run a speed test. And I'm gonna stay in the same location when I run both of these tests. So it won't actually even run the test, it just errored out. So I'll give it a second chance and see if it will run this time. I am now up to three bars and back down to two. I am getting some decent speeds, surprisingly. Usually when I'm out here, I am not getting speeds like this, but I will keep that in mind. So I've got about a 12 on average megabits per second download speed. And as far as upload goes, that is about a 2.5. So now that I've done that, let's switch over to the Cambium network. Whoa! That is crazy. I, was, I honestly was not expecting that. So even with two bars right now, I'm getting a 16.4 average download speed. Let's see if the upload speed is any better. It may not be just due to my phone not being able to send out a strong signal. That is very surprising. Let me run that one more time just to make sure that wasn't a fluke, but wow. I honestly was not expecting that. I am getting similar results. That is just slightly slower than what the Ubiquiti had as far as upload goes, but download, that is an astronomical difference. That is quite surprising for me. There you have it. I hope that that testing was enough for you guys to fully see that this is pretty powerful and has worked fantastically. I've had this up and running now for about a week actually, and I have not had any issues with dropouts or reboots or anything like that. It has been extremely reliable and it does not have as powerful of output as the Ubiquiti UAP Pro, but even still, for 75 bucks or less than that, 
This is an incredible deal in my opinion. As far as the sky key goes, adding it to the cloud I did not show, but it's super simple. All you've got to do is go over to cloud.ingenious.ai. You've got to sign up for an account and then you have to add your sky key through the serial number and register it to your account. After you've done that, you just enable the remote access locally on your sky key. And then once you've done that, you've got access to your sky key and through the sky key that allows access to the access point as well because once you click on the connect button that just brings you to the same view as you would see locally connecting to the sky key but yeah with that being said as far as the downsides with these products i do have to say that through the fully cloud-based accessing of the sky key and this for some reason that dashboard does not show up the ap's or even the sky key. You have to go and click on devices and then it shows up under there and that's where you can click on connect. So it's kind of weird and you can't even see your clients or the traffic that is going through through that cloud portal viewer. But if you click the controller and you go to the local version over the cloud, then you do get that information. But it's just kind of weird how it feels a little bit fragmented between the different controllers. I wish they would be more one-on-one -on -one as far as those go. But with that being said, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to purchase the Ingenious EAP 1250 or the Sky Key or both yourself, I will be leaving Amazon affiliate links down below in the description. So if you want to help support me and what I do over here on this channel, make sure to purchase from those links down below at no additional charge to you. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know by clicking the thumbs up button down below as well as commenting down below if you have any questions. And if you want to watch some random video, it'll probably be my Cambium setup from last year down there. And my last video is right over there. But with that being said, that is it for this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.